and uh, I am going to talk to you about my topic today is uh, how to give a bad talk, 10 commandments and more oral presentation advice. <laughs> I must warn you that this is free advice, so you should uh, take it for whatever it's worth. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. This is Sindhu calling from ITSI. We have a new scheme for CSR employees. Are you holding an ITSI credit card? I'm holding a phone. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the middle of something. Can I call you later? Okay, no problem, sir. Thank you. Uh, ICIC credit card. In your stage, it happens only really. Um, okay, so a lot of this is actually stuff that has been modified over the years, starting from something which was initially by uh, a series of ten commandments by David Patterson at the University of California and Berkeley. He had this thing in uh, sometime in the 1980s, before the era of computers and LCD projectors and PowerPoint. So a lot of it is actually meant to be, um, they are meant for good old transparency. Good old transparency, I don't even know if you've seen them. Uh, but they used to be plastic sheets on which you wrote stuff and put it up on a uh, projector. But uh, since, you know, uh, the era of PowerPoint and things have changed slightly, uh, though you will realize not very much. I do have some of my very dear, uh, dear transparencies in this thing called Bad Talk. As you can see, it's quite, quite old, and uh, but some of them are so nice that I might just still use transparencies. Though I think I have modern examples of almost each of these commandments. Um, so if you are ready, we should start. Um, this is slightly better. We have video as well. Uh, one day. If you recognize yourself anywhere, if you recognize this, whoever has made the slide, you know, just keep it to yourself. You don't have to announce that, oh, this is from my lab. Uh, <laughs> uh, the nice thing is with PowerPoint, I really like it because earlier, you know, uh, you had to ask people for their transparencies. You know, start up to make transparencies, people generally didn't give them to you. Most scientists, we like to just do the same thing, the same talk. You know, I give this talk every day. So, uh, we just recycle stuff. But uh, most of these transparencies are from PhD defenses. That's when they don't care about that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, right? On the other hand, with, with PowerPoint, after you give the talk, people are generally uh, careless enough to leave it on their on the machine. Every one of the PowerPoint slides you will see here is taken from a talk given most likely in this room. Or maybe in the next one. Right? You might recognize some of them. Uh, okay. So we look at Patterson's commandments and how you have things in the uh, you know, PowerPoint and then at the end I'll probably give you some um, some more of my own tips. Okay. So commandment one is thou shalt not be neat. Right? Why waste research time preparing slides, ignore spelling, grammar, legibility, uh, you know, who cares what the audience thinks, 50, 200, doesn't matter. Uh, and this actually, you know, the bad handwriting days are gone. But this actually dates back to the time when transparencies were expensive and you know like if you're like me I start preparing for a talk the night before and usually the night before when the um, you know it's hard to find blank transparency somewhere. Um, so the only thing you can do is see if there's uh, anything but recycle or sometimes you can't recycle transparency that easily. Um, at which time the savior used to be in those days used to handwrite transparency. So there used to be this savior in a bottle called acetone. Uh, you could take acetone and clean up an old transparency, right? And I could do this, and then use it again. And you could also just—it didn't matter what, how you, how you did it. You could just write up something or the other. And this transparency was made, you know, with a lot of preparation for the talk. You can see that. Um, okay. But today, of course, with PowerPoint, it's, it's not difficult to be neat. Uh, that problem, but you should not waste space. Uh, transparency used to be very expensive, so in DFR you can actually get them from the stores, it won't cost you much. But still, if you could save you know, a few slides every talk you gave, and you gave so many talks a year, you could save a lot of money. Which is why, uh, in the good old days, people used to be really, uh, what I would call, you know, a little conduced while... 
Um, they probably needed to refer to only one particular figure, but they never knew you know, some other talk I might need this one as well. So let's just get off both the pages of print. Let's just shrink it to put it on one slide, and there you go. Okay? Uh, you would think that it doesn't really cost money to insert another slide. You know, it costs the same amount, but maybe it's slightly more kilo by the um, it hasn't changed very much in the era of PowerPoint either. You can see that uh, somebody has taken the, the effort to really cut and paste all these things on a page and you can read these very clearly. <laughs> um, okay? This is from science education. Uh, in fact, you know, guess what? Uh, if you Google, you'll find that there are competitions which look at what is the world's worst slide for a given year. <laughs> and last year, the honor went to the US military. The US military has manuals for everything, including you know the mess they get into sometimes. So here's one of the messages going to <laughs> uh, This was this was uh, shown to somebody who was in the news last week. He got unfortunately lost his job last week. But uh, if you've heard about General Crystal, uh, <laughs> Uh, that was his comment on the slide. Now, with comments like this, you, you're not surprised that you know he loses his job for saying things. Uh, okay, let's get back to science. Here is another one. Uh, you can clearly see the curves and all the differences, I guess. So it doesn't cost to have put both these on different slides, perhaps, but you know, you can save space. The third one is thou shalt not covet brevity, and scientists are supposed to do science by writing this is one of their skills. And it's hard enough to you know, work for 8 weeks for the BSRP program to compress that into a short 15 minute talk or whatever, 6 page paper is going to be, uh, you know, now when you've, you've written this report and now you need to make a presentation. You always, this word submission deadline is always a few days before the presentation deadline. So the report comes first and then Microsoft has given us a beautiful thing called Control C. Control B. <laughs> You know, you can copy that and then you get a chance to read out everything to the audience. Um, so of course this would be this was my take. Patterson's Does anybody remember seeing this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to build up suspense. You had lots of results, and you really don't want to show everything at 
day one, and since animation wasn't there, you had overlays. Overlays are like this. You use overlays like this, you report. You start off with this. Okay? And this is like building up suspense. You need to tell people things one by one. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> now, the problem, the problem generally is, uh, what happens especially when you're a little nervous and you know, they're doing things like PhD defense, you're very nervous and this paper just flies away. <laughs> You know, means all your all your suspense is gone, but those are overlays. Um, those are overlays. Okay. Going. Thou shalt not write large. Be humble. Use a small font because you know, after all, whoever is going to evaluate your talk is sitting here. Who cares about the back of the back? Uh, so thou shalt not write large. You anyway saw one of these uh, compressed slides, but. Results and discussion. Now you can clearly see that this was attributed to uh, whatever. Transition <laughs> <laughs> uh, between E, something greater than E, and that's not the subscript on it. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Thou shalt not use color uh, because you know we are scientists and we should be serious and you know, use of color indicates that we are trying to come on or something. And why do you want to emphasize some words over the other? Now earlier you know you were restricted. Uh, you could use color, but unfortunately you couldn't use as much color as you could do with you can do now. Uh, which is why things weren't as interesting. But believe me, sometimes they were still not bad. <laughs> right? Or <laughs> okay. So you can use color. But of course, using color gets much more interesting when we have the palette of whatever 2 million colors or 65,000 colors that uh, are provided. Um, so you can use color and you can always use fonts. Uh, this might have been a nice choice for you know, introducing a nice happy stick or something. Mathematics, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know who gave this talk, but some of them is here. But you can put every point in a separate color, which is nice. Sometimes the background color is very helpful. Uh, so you can clearly see, uh, you can read everything on this, the background color. Sometimes the background you have to be careful because it can be... <laughs> uh, Pictures and graphs. So pictures are for weak minds, 